Hey, it's Birdman, and this is Your Choice 2020. We're going to be covering all the candidates, and today I have with me, running for representative of LD7, mm -hmm. David yeah. Pillman. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well today. Now, is it Dave or David? David. David. Okay. But, you know, either one, uh, but on the, uh, on the ballot, it'll be seen as David. As David. Okay, well, that's what we want to make sure people yeah. understand when we talk to them here is yeah. what it looks like on the ballot. Now... Talk to me a little bit about uh, your background, where maybe you grew up and uh, things like that. Uh, that's a very long story, longer than this show has, but <laughs> I'll give you the short story. I'm a tumbleweed, uh, born in Texas, raised in about 12 different states. Uh, my father was working in the aircraft industry that took them all over the place. Spent quite a bit of time in California, rural California, the farmland of California, uh, almonds, peaches, oranges, and... Uh, tomatoes right and then uh, joined the military from there I'm a veteran of two different branches twice retired from the Coast Guard uh, retired the first time in 1996 second time after 9 I got recalled after 9-11 and retired in 2006 and then as an adult which is uh, for the first time in my life I found myself I had the option of choosing where I wanted to live for the very first time in my life Wow and, you know, I'm 50-some years, you know, at the time, 50-some years old. And I had to make a decision where I wanted to live, and I chose the White Mountains. Very good. So talk to me about uh, your desire to run. Uh, how did you get to the point to where you're running for LD7? Well, you know, like a lot of people that come here and live here, we're, uh, we're concerned about keeping a roof over our head, putting beans on our plate, putting our kids through school, whatever we have to do to make a living. And I got to a point where I got comfortable and uh, I'm, you know, just comfortable. And I started looking around at some of the things that are going on in government. Uh, I was never very political. I never even ran for office in high school. But I saw some of the corruption that is very close to us here. I saw the disdain that certain political leaders have for us, uh, rural folks, how they treat us. And... Uh, I said, I can't take that anymore. I served all my life. And uh, I had neighbors and friends that we talked very socially around my kitchen table. And I had Representative Walt Blackman and his lovely bride, Christy, that convinced me to uh, put my hat in the ring for representative of LD7. Very good. And uh, it's been a roller coaster ride ever since. It's, 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 it's a tough road, I'll tell you. Uh, you need to... People need to look hard into themselves and pray about it if they really want to get into something like this. Okay. Talk to me about what you would think are three key things um, that you would say are the reason uh, that you're running or would be close to your heart. And if there's just one, that's fine, but, it, but no more than three. Just yeah. give me three. Well, let's talk about prosperity of the White Mountains. The White Mountains are not represented. We have people that have offices that are supposed to represent us and our interest, but they don't. They're never here. In fact, I invited both of our current office holders down to a, a gathering in Vernon for a little town hall. One of them showed up, um, but he lied straight face to a lady when asked a very specific question about abortion. That is one of the things that helped propel me in this direction. But let's talk about prosperity of the White Mountains. What is our economic engine here? We have a forest, we have tourism two of the biggest economic engines. The U.S. Forest Service, and I went to many meetings on this, have some plans for the transportation management plan, shutting down over 2,228 miles of roads and trails. That cuts down on our tourism, our hunters, and all the people that come up that spend dollars here in our hotels, restaurants, and other businesses. And on the other hand, the Forest Service has a plan uh, for FRI, the Forest Restoration Initiative very much for it. These, these two plans don't go hand in hand with each other. For Fry is taking the biomass, the fuel, out of the forest so we don't have these Rodeo Chetiskai fires, these other fires that threaten our homes. We'll still have a lot of mass up there, but take this biomass, the chips, the limbs, the debris, turn it into energy at the closing uh, power plants or a chipboard plant or an strand board plant in Snowflake where we have a railhead where we have now Snowflake is out of this district but it's still the White Mountains 
And people cross those imaginary lines all the time. So prosperity, continued prosperity, smart growth here. We have got some good leaders, and we got some good leaders coming up, and we have obviously some that uh, haven't done so well. And I wanna give them every bit of state help possible so we can retain our small town feel, our mountain burg feel, and uh, the rest of the county, uh, counties, Apache County, Navajo County, and so forth. Very good, awesome. Um, anything else that you'd want people to know uh, as they start to consider who they're gonna vote for? Well, yeah, uh, I would like people to recognize me as a pro-constitutionalist, a rural conservative, less taxes, less regulations, uh, we've had this incident that's been going on, they want to call it pandemic, COVID, whatever, for the last two and a half months. It has devastated us, completely devastated us. And we have, I know a lot of business owners up here, and I'm just going to use a general term, they've lost about 80% of their staff and 80% of their profits. That's people that are wanting to work, that don't want to go down and say, Mr. Government, give me money, let me sit on the couch watch Oprah and eat bonbons. They want to get out, put beans on their plate, keep a roof over their head. I want to support those people. And we have rules that are being challenged. They're, they're not laws. To show me in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, or the Declaration of Independence that we have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and liberty, but we have an asterisk, except when. Mm -hmm. We don't have that asterisk. I'm all about having our liberties. I have a young lady uh, that I met just weeks ago, just weeks ago, uh, met her and her husband, and we had a Liberty Lawn Party. People, you know, when everybody was cooped up in their house, they didn't think about the domestic abuse that goes on. The mental anguish of being there, locked up with your loved ones or whoever, not being, feeling threatened that you're not gonna be able to put beans on the plate keep a roof over your head and I know these people very intimately so we had a Liberty Lawn party we said all right we're just going to have personal responsibility y'all folks come out we're going to have a band we're going to have dancing on a fresh cut lawn porta potties wash stations just come on out just and it was it was the largest gathering of people in Apache County that I'm aware of at one place at one time during this lockdown very interesting. Hey, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So once again, that is uh, David Peelman. He is running for LD7 representative. Hey, and that's going to be it for this episode of Your Vote 2020. I'm Birdman reminding you, be informed and go vote.